Simulation modeling is a technique that allows you to basically create a digital copy of the system that you're trying to model. And instead of uh, writing down all the numbers and all the formulas to get the result, you just have to explain how the system works now. You have to write down all the relationships and the ground rules, and then you let it play out the same way it would play out in real life, only at higher speed. And then you'll see how things progress and what results you arrive at. You look at those results, you see whether you're satisfied with them, then you play with the numbers, you play with the parameters, you run it again. And you just keep doing it until you get the solution that you need. This is a very powerful approach and it can be used for investment decisions, it can be used for planning, for risk management, and plenty of other different kinds of applications. So what are the advantages? First, there's pretty much no limit on how much input you can put in your model. Pretty much the only limit is how much your hardware can handle. As such, simulation models don't require abstraction. You can handle processes, you can model them in as much detail as you want. You can model relationships of very high complexity. In fact, you can model relationships that you're not quite sure how they work, but you just lay down the ground rules and you let it play out, which is something that you would not be able to do in Microsoft Excel. You can also take time and location into account and you can handle uncertainty and randomness. So if you're modeling a bunch of trucks riding around a coal mine, well, at any moment, you can stop the model and you can see that this truck is here and that truck is there. You can see exactly where they are at any point in time. And that means no black box effect. When you're modeling a coal mine, you see a coal mine. You see how it works at any moment in time. You model an airport, you see an airport. So it's extremely transparent. You can see how it works and you can trust that the results you get are exactly the results you need and you can trust them. All right, so I'd like to talk about digital twins. Digital twin is a very well-known term. It's sort of a buzzword at this point, but not everyone understands exactly what it means in relation to uh, simulation modeling. Basically, when you create a simulation model, you make a copy of the system the way it is at the moment. But, but then the system might change. So for instance, if we're talking about a factory, that factory might get a new block, or it may have more trucks, or it may sell some of the trucks, or let some of the employees go. And then the simulation model that you've created is out of date. So you need to update it. You need to apply the same changes to your digital copy to keep it up to date. And when it's up to date, then it is a digital twin, and then it can be used in day-to-day -day, uh, decision-making support. All right, so how can businesses use simulation models? Well, first of all, system analysis. Normally, if you are an analyst or a manager somewhere in Moscow or New York, and you want to understand how your business in Alaska works, well, you got to go to Alaska. You got to look at things there. You got to talk to people there. And when, well, when you come back to Moscow, you no longer have that opportunity. Well, now with simulation modeling, you can just look at a model of your Alaska coal mine or some other business, and you can study it in as much detail as you want for as long as you want. In fact, you can gain more insight from that simulation model than from the real thing because there are places where we cannot physically go, but that's not the case for a computer model. Also, project evaluation. When you're looking at a project, you wanna see whether it's worth investing, whether it's worth the money and the time and the effort. And there are a lot of techniques, mostly uh, Excel related, such as NPV and IRR, uh, that are used to see whether a project is worth investing in. But they're not perfect, and 
sometimes you need more information. Well, simulation models can provide that extra information to let you be sure that a project is worth the money. On the flip side, if you are presenting your project for approval, you may need extra, um, extra arguments to convince the people of, on the other end that your project is worth investing in. And an, any lot, uh, a simulation model can be a very powerful presentation tool to show that your project is a good one. And finally, training. Uh, top managers need to have experience for dealing with high stakes situations because a lot of the times when they find themselves in a high stakes situation, it may be the first situation of that kind that they're ever in. So they don't have experience and they basically have to go with a gut feeling and it's risky. Well, with a simulation model, they can practice those high stakes decisions in a perfectly risk free environment. And then when they face such a situation in real life, they will already have experience. They will know exactly what to do to get the results that they need. Now, any logic. Of all the simulation modeling tools on the market, we believe any logic is the best one. And so do 40% of Fortune 100 companies. They use AnyLogic for their optimization projects and day-to-day decision-making support. Why is that? Well, first of all, AnyLogic supports database integration with all the popular database solutions. So if you need to feed information into the model, you can just hook it up to Oracle or SQL or Excel. There's no extra steps required. You just integrate it with the databases that you're using. And similarly, when you get the results out of the system, you can uh, transfer them to Oracle or SQL without any problem. So seamless database integration is a huge boon. Uh, then there's visualization. You can visualize your models in 2D and in 3D. So there's no black box effect. Everything is perfectly transparent. And finally, uh, Jello. A lot of these solutions on the market only give you a set of tools out of the box that you can use to model your processes, but quite often they're not enough. In fact, we found during our projects that when you're modeling a very complex system, you need more. And well, any logic provides that. It lets you write your own code. It lets you write your own algorithms to express the business logic the way it is without any unnecessary abstraction. And that is great. Obviously, it requires programming know-how, but if you have it or if you hire someone who has it, then it's great and it greatly enhances your ability to model your businesses the way they need to be modeled to get the results that you want.